Archaeologists from the University of Manchester may have recently started digging at a 5,000-year-old Neolithic tomb linked to King Arthur, but could the earlier discovery of a strange fragment of text provide evidence for the existence of the mythical king? Arthur's stone in Herefordshire is the subject of new excavations, although as a Stone Age monument, the site is only linked with a folktale legend of Arthur, rather than having any connection to the period in which he was said to have lived, in the 5th or 6th centuries, in the time after the Romans retreated from Britain. But isn't it all just mythology anyway? Did Arthur exist at any time? Perhaps some evidence can be gleaned from a fascinating shard of stone discovered at Tintagel, Cornwall, in 1998. Tintagel would, due primarily to literature, be on the list of places one might look at when studying the Arthur legend. This does not mean there is much in the way of historical evidence for his connection to the stunning rocky headland in Cornwall or of his existence at all, although could that be changed by the mysterious rock known erroneously as the Arthur Stone? First, let's look at the mythic connection of Arthur to the site. The first connection of Arthur with Tintagel derived from Geoffrey of Monmouth in his Historia Regum Britanniae, the history of the kings of Britain, written in around 1136. According to the Welsh author, who was writing several centuries after the supposed Age of Arthur, the rocky outcrop at Tintagel was the site of the legendary king's conception. According to Geoffrey and the legend he claims to be relaying, Arthur's father was Uther Pendragon, the king of all Britain. Uther goes to war against Gorlois, the Duke of Cornwall, to capture his wife Igraine, with whom Uther has fallen in love. Gorlois defends himself against Uther's armies at his fort at Dimilioc, but he sends Igraine to stay within the walls of Tintagel Castle, his most secure redoubt. Uther is said to have besieged Dimilioc, telling his companion Ulfin how he loves Igraine, but Ulfin replies that it would be impossible to take Tintagel, because it is right by the sea and surrounded by the sea on all sides, and there is no other way into it except that provided by a narrow rocky passage, and there three armed warriors could forbid all entry, even if you took up your stand with the whole of Britain behind you. Geoffrey goes on to explain how the wizard Merlin is called upon to find a solution. He was said to have used magic to alter Uther's appearance to that of Gorlois to help him gain access to Tintagel Castle and deceive Igraine into sleeping with him. The ruse succeeds and, as the story goes, in that night was the most famous of men, Arthur, conceived. Merlin's price for the magical deception was to be given the resultant child to raise himself. But the story tells how Uther marries Igraine, but must go to fight the Saxons. Despite defeating the invaders, Uther dies after drinking from a well poisoned by the Saxons. This well is rumoured to be at the foot of Holywell Hill in St Albans, which was then called Verulam after the old Roman settlement of Verulamium. My previous video on Sacred Springs goes deeper into this story and the associated legends. So despite only being associated with Arthur's conception rather than being touted as his place of birth or where he lived, Tintagel became intrinsically linked to the entire mythos. This was illustrated by Alfred Lord Tennyson using the location as the focal point in his poem Idols of the King. So what is the Arthur, or to give it its correct name, the Artognu Stone? The stone was unearthed at Tintagel Castle in 1998 and is securely dated to the 6th century. The site of the 13th century castle, built in homage to Arthurian romances, lies close to a far older so-called Dark Age settlement. The site was a focal point for international trade in tin and other goods in Roman and sub-Roman Britain. Two recent archaeological digs at Tintagel Castle in 2016 and 2017 uncovered the outlines of a palace from the 5th or early 6th century. They also revealed it was a potential trading hub with close links to the continent as evidence of writing and artefacts being imported from Visigothic Spain and further afield in the eastern Mediterranean were unearthed. The artefact itself is thought to have been originally a practice dedication stone for a building, but it was broken in two and reused as part of a drain when the original structure was destroyed. There is an obvious similarity of the word Artognu, which features on the stone, to Artorius and to potential translations in the Brythonic languages of Cornish, Welsh and Breton, which all have legendary links to King Arthur. The inscription has been translated by the Celtic inscribed stones project as Artognu descendant of Paternus Colus made this, Colus made this. The name Artognu is thought to mean bear knowing from the Brythonic root Arto bear plus gloro to know and is cognate with the old Breton name Arthnu and Welsh Arthnu. There is no concrete evidence of Arthur's existence and some suggest his story is a retelling of those previously attributed to a lost Celtic god or gods. 
Although there is a Celtic bear deity that we do know about, Artio, although she is a goddess who, like bears in general, was strongly associated with motherhood, still a Celtic rendering of the Proto-Indo-European Arctos or Arteryx or Artorius means bear king. As well as pagan echoes from the prehistoric past, the stone could also portray Christian iconography, particularly from the Greek Orthodox Church of the Byzantine Empire, which is likely to have shared trading links with the Kingdom of Dumnonia, of which Cornwall was a part, and Tintagel in particular. The truth is, we don't know whether Arthur existed, but this stone found where it was and dated to the mythical Age of Arthur presents a tantalising possibility. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. And thank you for watching.